Hello, hello, hello. Here we are back again with another Shoe Snob unboxing video, One Take Wonder series. Thank you so much for tuning in. So here we have a sequel to another video that I previously did. Uh, brands that have two collections, I like to show both the normally a bench grade and then the hand grade collection. So we already showed the bench grade and here we are with the hand grade by Crockett and Jones. So if you recall, or if you go back and check, the bench grade collection had a green box and I made a comment wondering if the hand grade had a different box and a different colorway. And yes, they do. And from what I recall, this is also a higher quality, thicker paper box. Uh, so yeah, let's just quickly look. I don't recall the sticker. I want to say the sticker is the same. Um, just coloring is different. So here we are today. I have the Courtney model, uh, last 363, and the dark brown antique cap and a bark tan leather sole. So let's check it out. All right, so tightly packed. Sorry, it's a little bit messy here. Tightly packed, as you can see, with tissue paper. Open it up. We got a blue shoe bag to match the blue box. Now, if you recall, the Bench Crate line had green bags, green box. Here we have a blue theme. Uh, beautiful Adelaide Oxford. Let's take a look at what else. All right spare set of laces. Now the first shoe I, I uh, unboxed was a, a loafer, which you don't get extra things on a loafer. So uh, apparently you do get extra laces though in an Oxford. All right, there's another bag here, but I'm just gonna leave it inside the box for purposes. Oh. Alexa talking and, your Alexa and I can't help that, sorry. All right, so here we are, Crockett and Jones hand grade. Um, Let's get a closer look really quick. <clears throat> so 363 last. It's a nice side profile. And the sole. All right. Definitely stay tuned for my uh, up close videos as well. In the unboxing videos, I like to do more talking, share with you my opinion, and then in the up close detailed videos, I like to show you more of the shoe and kind of less talking, less opinion, and just give you a bit more factual of the design and functionality and construction of the shoe and what cons constitutes a bench grade versus hand grade and all the details that go along with that. So, anyway. I'm just going to quickly take a look at these as I haven't even inspected them yet. Um, we're unboxing this together. So I'm just trying to note the differences in the bench grade and the hand grade that I previously did. Uh, okay. Very nice. All right, so let's get talking. First things first, again, when I describe what constitutes bench grade, I talked about straight waists and open channel soles. So uh, in contrast, the bench grade has beveled waists on both the outside arch and the inside arch. Again, a bevel is when the uh, edge here is somewhat rounded off. Uh, and it's not gonna be completely round because that doesn't look attractive either, but it's it's pretty much a softening of the edges, which gives it uh, a different look and visually speaking, really helps to kind of set that arch inward, which gives a very nice visual line here and, and a separation between the heel to the forefoot and the forefoot to the toe. Uh, Again, this might be hard to see on this camera, but visually speaking, a beveled waist is always a cleaner, in my opinion, a cleaner, more elegant 
uh, design feature. It's, this is not uh, by any means something that makes a difference in quality, longevity, comfort. This is purely aesthetic, but it's an aesthetic feature that for me uplifts the look of the shoe. Um, so the hand grade line has the beveled inner and outer arches uh, and arch, i.e. the edging of the sole in the arch regions. Um, just trying to take a look at the other things again they have the uh, you know, the blind sole stitch there on the welt so you don't actually see the stitching that is done on the welt you don't uh, I'm to be honest I'm not even gonna say that I'm super expert on that because you don't see this a lot it's uh, it's a feature that Crocker and Jones does which I think shows their skills because it's not the uh, it is something that takes an extra step in quality well in in construction to do it's not it's not as simple as just stitching it on like everybody else does um, it's kind of probably goes in tune with the, the channel where you cut it and then you close it again and then you you go over it to kind of hide the stitching anyway it creates I guess one could say it creates kind of a cleaner look some people may prefer to see the stitching but some people, for those of you who love Blake Stitch shoes, you I, I presume you like Blake Stitch, in my opinion, because with a Blake Stitch, you can get the sole almost looking like it's pegged to the upper, and you have a very fine silhouette all around, so you don't see a protruding welt. And having the blind stitch kind of helps with that illusion of the eye. It's almost finer. The stitching makes it almost beefier, so to speak. So yeah, uh, <clears throat> that's again a detail on both shoes in reality. Um, the sole, now I don't recall seeing oak bark on the box on the other, on the bench grade. I could be wrong though, I don't remember actually even looking at that section of the box last time. But the sole on the Crockett hand grade is a beautiful sole. And this lovely dark brown, um, very clean closed channel. Uh, you have kind of like a very small hump in the waist here it's not overly narrow in the waist but you have a very tiny hump some might call this flat it's definitely not trying to be a fiddleback or anything in reality the small hump is most likely the shank um, and just the natural shape that the shank creates uh, especially when you put the cork back over it so the sole is beautiful. Um, the closed channel is super clean. Uh, it's so clean that it could look like <laughs> it could look like a Blake shoe, like it's a just slapped on. That's how good it is. Um, just trying to notice any other differences. Obviously. Okay, another major difference in the hand grade line is you have. A full sock liner you won't be able to see this um, you have a full sock liner in the shoe so you don't touch the insole with your foot again this is a preference thing some people will find that more comfortable some people prefer not to have it fully sock lined uh, on top of that they use what I think this is speculation I haven't confirmed this but the lining is definitely a higher grade in fact I want to say that the lining is actually uh, the same type of leather you would use on the upper on the outer which is always gonna be softer uh, more fine more uh, how to put it? It, it it's just a lot softer on your foot the veg tan classic lining is nice lining there's different d grades of it and the higher you go the nicer it is but I won't lie, when you sweat, it does stick to your feet. And that's just the way it goes. That's the way the veg tan is. This definitely looks more like a, a chrome tan upper type leather, which is always softer. It's a little bit more slippery, so it doesn't always grip as well, but your feet feel like they're in, um, I don't know. <laughs> in, uh, I don't know how to describe it. I don't want to say the wrong word. They feel just really luxurious when you have 
upper leather or close to upper leather in the lining like when John Lobb say has museum calf inside in the lining I've, I've tested this on a few of my shoes and you definitely feel the difference it's a different feel altogether so that's what you get in the Crocker and Jones hand grade you get a higher end lining now most won't ever think about this but if that is upper leather that's a huge cost just so you know that's you know let's just call that you know conservatively speaking half the cop half the the upper that you know that adds to your your end price point but is a feature that is definitely a bump up and that you you feel and you notice and for for those of you that have had both hand grade and bench grade shoes by Crockett you probably know what I'm talking about for those of you that don't well one day maybe you will um, the upper leather for me as well is definitely seems finer you you get more of a shine on the hand grade shoes it, it definitely sees seems like they polish the entire shoe not to say that the Cavendish bench grade wasn't polished but I think they polish this one more uh, or it's just a leather that takes the polish better so it's just naturally shinier but it does appear to be a finer leather in the sense that it's uh, it's definitely seems more luxurious it's I, I'm I want to say they're still using French calfskin um, and obviously within grades of calfskin you have you have higher quality lower quality you have different thicknesses you have more expensive product lines between you know you go to a tannery and one product line costs X and then another one costs more because it's a you know there's, there's a million things leathers complex but it definitely seems like a better leather so to speak B better in terms of like again better is subjective it feels finer softer the Cavendish leather seemed thicker maybe maybe stronger I know that uh, you know with luxury obviously a lot of things are soft and comfortable and uh, finesse and these types of words whereas you know in more bench grade it's like robust and durable and not to say that hand grade is not durable but hopefully you understand what I'm saying they just seem more luxurious they seem like a finer shoe so uh, yeah the differences in the bent and the bench grade and the hand grade are definitely there and it's good I like that Crockett has this I like that you're able to notice what what differentiates between these two ideas um, because I think people often don't think about the differences in shoes price points which is you know they don't realize every single little detail that has a cost increases the price that's just that's just business you know there's a cost there's a margin there's a final price it's the way it goes it's uh it's how it will go in every industry and for every product and even every service so um definitely to to see the details that are different is nice it, do, it doesn't mean that they're just throwing a label out there and not giving you that extra they're definitely giving you the extra and those extras cost money so yeah lovely shoes apparently this is one of their top sellers uh or it could have just been the manager's favorite model i don't recall uh, i tried it on 363 i tried my typical size in a uk six and a half us seven and a half uh, the last feel is slightly elongated, but the size was right. So I definitely wouldn't have went any other way. Um, I actually tried it in a loafer, which uh, which is surprising because I believe in the Cavendish, they size like I size my own loafers. I take a higher size than I do in say in Oxford, but in the hand grade, the loafer fit uh, in the same size in a UK six and a half, US uh, seven and a half, and I believe that I would have taking that same size in the Oxford. They didn't have my size at the time in this, but I did try the last. Um, the last is just a very classic shape, as you can see. Not, uh, it's a round classic shape, not with a little bit of elongation, not too, not overly round, but not pointy by any means. Very classic, very easy to wear. I love the color of this shoe. It's very beautiful. What do they call it? Dark brown antique cap. Very fitting, as you can see that this is a, this appears to be a crushed shoe and the leather is created and it's a very beautiful shade very lovely dark brown anyway 
I hope you guys have enjoyed this as always, and I hope you learned something about what makes the differences between hand grade and bench grade. And yeah, definitely if you ever get a chance, you know, you can hear me all day talk about it, but in reality with shoes and good shoes in general, you feel the differences when you put them on your feet. So if you're ever in the market for a CNJ shoe, head to the store, try a few on, and then start to really understand why one is called one, one is called bench grade and why another is called hand grade because they do have differences and those differences equate to different prices and there are reasons why shoes are more expensive than the others and there are reasons why you can't buy a $500 shoe and expect it to be a $1000 shoe so thanks for tuning in as always uh, please hit the like, please share, please subscribe. Check out the blog for more further posts and writing longer posts talking about different things. And yeah, comment below and thank you again for all your support. Wishing everybody a great day. Take care. Bye.